The icy wastes before her felt profound and deeply wrong, like staring into a grisly wound revealing bone under the fleshy mounds of muscle, seeing layers of Jeremy that she would rather stay hidden. What can be said about Jacob van Ostad without evoking contempt or apologia? The first piece of information is the obvious. He is not the explorer Jeremy idolized in his youth, but the figment of his imagination. If you want biographical facts, I am not the one to answer such questions. In the case of Jeremy, he is a guardian of imagination, or rather a persona appointed the role of containing a self-sabotaging mania. However useful Jacob once was, his loyalty to Jeremy has slowly been replaced by fanaticism. Like a firekeeper who has for decades been burnt by his own sacred flames, now does what he imagines the fire wants. Jeremy has lost all control over Jacob and suffers greatly because of him, but is admittedly also still invigorated by his labor. In the plainest of words, Jacob keeps Jeremy sick so he can remain Jeremy. We found the ancient Stellarium perched on a cliff facing the Arctic Ocean after a day of sailing due north of the Eskimo encampment. Jacob van Ostadt was our most keen member of the expedition. He had been chasing down the source of a peculiar type of crystallized metal present in several sacred items among the natives on the northeast coast of Greenland. The site was a remarkable find for any explorer, and we were all enraptured in our search for enlightenment and meaning. The surviving architecture seemed almost unearthly in origin and astonishingly sophisticated. 
The metal Jacob was searching for was abundant, almost ubiquitous. We were so taken by our find that we were surprised by the sun falling below the horizon. As we quickly picked up our gear, ready to head back to our camp, Jacob von Ostadt declared that he wanted to stay. He was adamant. We begged him to reconsider. The night would be getting colder by the hour, and we feared for all our safety. Jacob refused, threatening us with violence if we wouldn't leave him alone. As the snowfall turned heavier, we left him there on his own. The next day the weather became worse, and we had to spend hours enforcing our shelter as our tents became increasingly useless. The group had written off Jacob, thinking he must be dead. I had an urge to make one final attempt to save him, so I headed out as darkness fell with a handful of flares and headed toward the coast and up the climb, towards the Stellarium. That's when I saw him, transfixed by a burning sky, that celestial lantern. Jacob keeled over and let out a painful shriek that struck me with such fear and pity. He was crying in agony, for the cold weather had ravaged his flesh. I called out to him, and he turned to face me. His vacant stare held me in place like a needle through a butterfly, and he said, You must leave now, Hashtan. Go, and never come back. And so I left.
What do you want? Emily, you should not have come. Yeah, hey, we can talk about this. It's too late for that. It's too late. <laughs> man is going to be in the middle of your existence, Jeremy, and at least set everything in order.
Why are you here? I did everything you wanted to break the pact. What else can I do? Wait, it did work. That's why you're coming after me. You're in my head now. In that case, I hope you enjoy your stay. Emily, stop! Don't worry, we got you. Are you alone? Or is he in there with you? Miss Hotwood is up! Heard you almost painted the foyer with your own blood and guts. <laughs> Good to see you still in one piece. Stick around, will you? It's gonna be an exciting night. Good to see you made it, miss. And all that ruckus, a lot of give you a healthy dose of that sleeping juice. Wasn't sure you'd be waking up again. What happened? You had a psychological breakdown. Tried to shoot yourself. Sorry for the manhandling, but we just wanted to save you. You also stabbed Jeremy in the eye. Is he alright? Hmm. He's a little strange. But everything else is back to normal. Really? I broke the pack? I don't know what you did, but it worked. Let's see you standing up, miss. Jeremy, are you okay? I'm so sorry for hurting you. How can you ever forgive me? Emily, I missed you so. I do hope you'll stay with me for a while. Uncle, what's wrong? Is it anesthesia? He, he seems so meek. I wish that was the case. It turns out that you managed to lobotomize him. It's actually quite impressive, considering your technique. This is permanent? You sacrificed a piece of his mind to save the whole. It's a little like treating a bad knee by cutting off the leg. It's blunt, but it works. That's terrible! Perhaps. But at least he won't suffer anymore. Do you remember the Dark Man, Jeremy? Ah, yes. Where did he go? I hope he's doing all right. You see? With a violent stab, you made any future treatment quite redundant. I assume you will be bringing him with you back to New Orleans. I will. I just need to find Detective Carnby. <laughs>